You're watching Chewing the Cud with Mike Benny Rowe and Lee Robertson. And I said, oh, look, that fridge is called a smeg as well. That's interesting. Mm. Mm. Well, hello and welcome to Chewing the Cud. What have you got for us this week, Lee? I have got some news about an elder statesman of pop and their new hobby. Oh. Interesting, that, isn't it? Indeed. An elder statesman of pop. Woman. Person. Person. Woman. Okay. It's not shared this week, so it's okay. Oh, okay, that's it. Try to mix it up a bit. <laughs> so it's Dolly Parton again then. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, thanks for that. On screen now, you can see all the ways of getting hold of us. It's at the Could TV on social media, where you can follow us. The TV for our website, and on YouTube and podcast services, look for Chewing the Cud and hit subscribe. And as the names of people who have shared or liked one of our posts scroll along the bottom of the screen, we go over to Mike and the Buzz. You've been on holiday recently, haven't you? It's a loose term. <laughs> it's a loose term? Mm. Okay, shag weekend. No, not even that. Not even that. Not even that, Mike. Not even the bonus of that. Just, just, <laughs> just a couple bonus. of days in the country. Oh, that's nice. It well, was, it's, yes. Well, nice to get away to the country. Yes. Um, well, there's a, a new thing happening. Um, have you ever been to Wales on a holiday for a mini break? I have, yes. Yes. It's what actually quite nice, <laughs> Wales. <laughs> mm. I was just scanning my memories back. Did I enjoy it or not? No, I did. It was. Oh, hello. Um, <laughs> it's actually quite nice. Yeah, the Mumbles. The Mumbles? Mm, is that a place in Wales? <laughs> is it? It's, yeah. Yeah, I went there. <laughs> but it's the way you looked at it. Went, Mumbles. I was getting confused with the Shambles in York. That's something different. Mm. And the Mumbles of Wimbledon. Mumbles of them, yes. <laughs> yes. Yes. Very different. Um, well, there's so some people have been a bit upset with the Welsh because they're thinking about bringing in a new tax oh. of for tourism. Okay. So anyone going to, to Wales for tourism purposes may find they're getting a small tax. Okay. Yeah. That includes people from England. All right. Yeah. So people are going, it's, it's outrageous because, you know, they're only nipping over to the seaside and... What what is the tax for? What are they going to use that money for? For for Wales. Yeah, but for what in Wales? <laughs> for the, the people. Making things nicer. Making things nicer and, and stuff you? and things. That was me. Yes, well done. Yeah, I could have beat that, but I might. <laughs> yeah, that was. Only shag for night tonight. Yeah, that's already. Yeah. No, that was that was that was an big, email. <laughs> big tool for you. No, it wasn't big tool for you actually. It was Mister Nine Inch. <laughs> anyway, um, but yeah, they're going to use it for to improve the local economy. To make things nicer and things because what they find is when they raise council tax, yeah, they don't necessarily get all of the money, so it goes into government. Okay. So it also means that people with second homes in Wales are going to see an increase in their own council tax bill in the area okay. of up to 300%. How much is that in hard, cold cash? Well, it depends on how much your council tax was to start with, oh. to how much it would go up by. Okay. Because that's how percentages work. But then, the, my feeling is, is that if yep. you've got a second home in Wales, you're mm. not shite of a... Shite? shite? You're not shite of a coin? <laughs> That's not Welsh. It's not. It's not, what I, what, it's not Irish either. What action was it? I'm not quite sure what it was. Um, no, uh, but second home, not necessarily that you live in. No. Or that you rent. So you're like it, a holiday home. Or you rent out. Yeah. Well, then you either sell it or you just shut your face and get on with it. Okay. <laughs> Loving the sympathy and the, the idea of one nation being together and... I kind of get the I kind of get the, the, the idea behind it. Uh-huh. You know, because they had, like... The Wales had people, like, traipsing through their country during lockdown. People going, I'm just going on my, my, my daily exercise from Manchester all the way to Wales. That's what... That well, they couldn't because Welsh had closed borders. Well, when it was, that was open... I don't know what I'm saying. <laughs> no, okay, okay. Okay, that's fine. <laughs> Shall we move on a little bit then? Yeah. Shall we move on? Okay. Um, how do you feel about pussies? Mm. Not fa- I'm not a fan of, of them in any variety. You're not a fan of the pussies? No. No. How about cute little kittens? Nanosecond. Nanosecond. Mm. Okay. Um, well, that's going to be good because this is a story about a cat who had some kittens while struck, stuck in a drain pipe. Yeah. Um, so she was actually she was rescued, mm. right, um, by someone using a toy car to help her come out. <laughs> Why did you laugh at so all? Bit... She was rescued. It's a good story, Lee. How, Why is how, that funny? <laughs> how did they use the toy car to get around? They basically put a little toy car on the gutter, 
right? And made it go zooming backwards and forwards. So she came forward so they could get to her. So she went to attack the toy car. Not that trap, then. Oh. Trapped enough not to be able to get down herself. I'm going to say this, controversial. Cats are assholes. <laughs> they are. <laughs> They're just assholes. <laughs> they do things on purpose. That cat did that on purpose. <laughs> it, wasn't, it wasn't trapped. It went, where is the most inconvenient place I can give birth to my kittens? <laughs> I'm going to go up there. I'll get out any moment <laughs> that I just want all these people to try and try and just give me attention. So my, my friend Lewis has a cat, and I said, watch out, that cat will try and kill you. Mm. And he said, no, it won't. And then he kept saying, I kept waking up, smothering me on the face. Mm. I was like, yeah, they'll lie across your face while they, you yeah, they will sit on your chest and breathe your soul in. <laughs> no, mm. actually he fell asleep on his face. Well, that is, so who is yeah. asleep and this cat used to just lie across his face to smother him? Mm. And I've said this before, if you died alone in your house with a cat, it would eat you. It would eat your face. Yeah. Whereas a dog would lie by your side and pine. Yeah, we'll cats, cry. Ten minutes and your nose is gone. Like... Give it ten minutes. <laughs> okay. The only cats I like are those evil looking sphinx ones. You like the ugly cats? The ones that look like a chicken, <laughs> like a plucked chicken. Why do you like those? Because they look evil. <sighs> They look like they look like a demon. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. And if you have any demon cat pictures, feel free to share them with us. We are at the Good TV on social media websites. Social media websites. Now that's a word, isn't it? Um, but moving on to our story of the week, we've we've talked about side hustles in the past. Mm -hmm. Yeah, other jobs, ways to get second income. Yeah, you just give me the blank look of going. Have we? What are they? <laughs> Who am I? What am I doing? What are these? <laughs> um, well, this is a woman who's who's making a thousand pounds a month by selling pictures of her bodily hair. <laughs> what? <sighs> Why did you roll your eyes? What? 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 <laughs> I just, I just, I just, I. Do you know what? If there was a cliff outside, there, I would just, I would just hang up my microphone. And just walk off the end of it. Okay. Because because what what is the world coming to, Mike? Well, she's not selling pictures of, like of a nunny and stuff. No, she's selling pictures of her pits. Yeah, just her hairy armpits and hairy legs. Would you like to see a picture of hairy legs? Not really, but it's you're going to put it up anyway, aren't yes, you? Yeah. Just there we go. Nice. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> Why are you laughing? No, it's just reminding me of a scene out of Mrs. Doubtfire, uh -huh. where Mrs. Doubtfire gets on the bus. And a, sock, and a tight rolls down and he sees the hairy legs and he turns and he goes, I like a woman who's natural. <laughs> and that's what it reminds me of. Obviously, she doesn't look like Mrs. Doubtfire at all. Well, yeah. um, how much is she making? £1,000 a month. £1,000 a month? By selling pictures of her body hair nice. on OnlyFans. Okay. Yeah. What? See, I, when they say, oh, I'm, j I'm making this much, it's just showing a picture of my pit. I don't think it's just a picture of your pit. No, because if it was more than a pit, then she'd be making more money, wouldn't she? Do you think... £1,000 a month isn't that much for... Yeah. We've, we've talked about people that sold farts for £40,000 a month. By the way, I want money for that. <laughs> I don't give my farts away free. Um, so look, Pitts, there, there they are. An attractive angle, isn't it? It's not a good angle. <laughs> <laughs> Can you see my nose hair as well? <laughs> um, well, I suppose if you've got it, <sighs> yeah. make a bit of cash from it. Um, so her name's Candice. She's from Canada. Canada? Canada. Is that not Canada? No, it's Canada. Canada. Is Canada, Canada a place? Yeah, Canada. Okay. Yeah. Um, so she's from Canada. She's mum of one. Yeah. Small um, hairy, small hairy <laughs> child. Small hairy child. Ewok, actually. <laughs> um, but she's, she said she's often tired and fatigued, so shaving her whole body takes too much time and energy. She's often tired and fatigued. <laughs> yes. Well, welcome to my world, bitch. <laughs> I'm not selling pictures. <laughs> Of my gooch online. <laughs> She's not selling pictures of a gooch. Okay. It's a pits and legs and things. I disagree, but you know, whatever. Um, well, good for good for her. Yeah. Um, so what she's saying? She's saying she's a hundred percent comfortable in her own skin. Yeah. She wouldn't expect everyone to stop shaving. Just do what you want. <laughs> do what you want and shut up. Well, so would you? Would they you keep say? asking me, me, and I'm choosing to ignore them. <laughs> they keep saying, "How would you silly? Uh, my sparkling wit and um, and general good natured." <laughs> Good natured. Good natured advice. To people. Yeah. Yeah. Next week's the buzz. Um, TV host dies of starvation <laughs> if they try to survive <laughs> on their good wit and um, good natured advice. Mm -hmm. um, mm. But that's all from the buzz this week. Wow. Thank you, thank you for that. I'm going to. 
That's toe jam. Toe jam? Toe jam. Toe jam. Toe jam. Toe jam. I, could, I could sell pictures of a toe jam. What's toe jam? Toe jam is the when you take your sock off yeah. and you put your finger between your toes and, and it's like muck between your toe. Toe jam. Don't tell me <laughs> you've not heard of it. Toe jam. <laughs> <laughs> toe jam. You know what toe jam is, people. do you. Up and down the country now, the people are scared at this computer screen no, going, no! Up and down the country, no. <laughs> people are actually putting their finger between their toes and going, toe jam. Wow. <coughs> oh, well, um, yeah, as we, we go on to our toe jam, um, coming up next we have Lee in the showbiz. You're watching Chewing the Cud with Lee and Mike. Now let's get ready for our weekly roundup of showbiz with Lee. So, I, I tease a little bit of an elder states person of pop. Uh -huh. It's not Cher. Yeah, it's Dolly Parton then. It's not Dolly Parton. It's you know Tina another Turner. celebrity. It's not Lulu. <laughs> Somebody have Sing a shout. <laughs> Debbie Harry of Blondie. Oh! Do you know she's 76? I can believe it. And she's still they're still touring as a band. So she's talking about how they're, they're, the band is due to go back on tour. Okay. Uh, this is a picture of them in their heyday. Debbie Harry is one of the back. <laughs> not much hay. Just to point that but out. But not much hay there. Not much hay? You said it was in their heyday. Oh, okay. Right, okay. Um, so what she has just said is that back in the day, mm -hmm. every drug going... Every, every drug going. Every every illegal drug that you could get oh, your okay. hands on, uh -huh. she would have heroin, toe jam, all that kind of stuff. You're up on your street references Just, there. Yeah, yeah. So uh, it's like but, heroin, <laughs> cocaine. Molly. Is that a, is that a drug? Ecstasy. Yes. The hashish. The all hashish. of those things. Yeah. <laughs> she she so so she's bringing when they're going on when they're going on tour this year. <clears throat> she's bringing different kinds of needles. Not heroin needles, knitting needles. She's, um, oh, did you see what I did? Yeah. Yeah. So, so she, she's been talking to the big issue and she said, I'm really curious about how I'm going to respond being back on the road since I haven't been on touring for a couple of years and I've had to change my behaviour over the past couple of years and that is a really hard thing to change. Okay. Um, so she said, on tour these days, she's going to do what the women did at the French Revolution. Not cut people's heads off, but she's going to sit there rocking... Steal, with steal the money from the decaying corpses. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah, knitting. That's what she's going to do. She's going to be bringing in, bringing in knitting needles with her. We've got a picture of her then. So she's doing a Tom Daly. Well, God, I hope not. Not twee like he does. But um, yeah. probably like like jumpers that say f off on them, that kind of thing. That, I really miss heroin. Um, yeah. She's <laughs> <laughs> needles. Things yeah. Like that. yeah. Um, so we've got, we've got a picture. <laughs> do you know who needs this big warm jumper? A heroin addict, <laughs> a meth head. Mm. So yeah, um, she said drugs are a funny thing. There, the, she said there are th what the, the thing that drove her away from taking drugs was the, the actual cost. work to get them. Because she's okay. like saying to actually get them is like a full time occupation. It, she said it became really unpleasant. Kind of you've got to have a dealer, then you've got to blah blah blah, and every time every state that you go to, so you've got to have a dealer and then blah blah blah. <laughs> blah, blah so blah. basically, you've got to have a dealer and pay for them. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so she said, luckily for me, she was able to handle the withdrawal. So she just went cold turkey. A picture of her back in the heyday didn't look particularly heroiny there, did she? Looked no. quite uh, healthy. That's what she looks like now. I think there's a bit of airbrushing going on there. A bit. Yeah, a little bit. Um, so she's she's but she works out twice a week now. She eats mainly raw foods. Um, <laughs> <Holy> f <laughs> that's a raw food. Um, <laughs> uh, but she thinks that getting older is horrible, which I completely agree with. Would you? Yeah, I think it's horrific. <laughs> Let's move on now. Okay. Harry Styles. We hardly ever talk about Harry Styles. No, hardly <laughs> ever. Only on the days ending in the letter Y. Yeah. So he's talking about he's going to be in a film called My Policeman. And he plays a homosexual. Uh, plays. A bisexual. Plays. Plays. He's not really. Plays. Yeah. So he's going to play a, a character in the upcoming drama, and he's been talking about the sex scenes, because there's going to be some sexy scenes. Okay. Yeah. So he's, he's about to release his, his next album, which is called Harry's House. We've got a picture of it. It's upside down. He's got some flares on. 
looking at a lamp. Sounds cutting edge. Um, yeah. Why is the water not flying out of his flowers? I don't know. I don't know. I couldn't name a single Harry Styles song. Watermelon sugar. Watermelon sugar. Watermelon sugar. Watermelon sugar. That's all I know. And this is why you do really badly at Uza Kazoo. <laughs> Yeah, modern songs. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So no, because there's, there's not because of the words, just the tune you just no, did was tune. not the right tune. Yeah, yeah. So he's going to be playing. So he's got two films coming out. Yeah. It's called Don't Worry, Darling, and My Policeman. And My Policeman is a film where he plays a gay policeman, um, and he's had to film a couple of gay sex scenes. Okay. So we've got a picture of him as the character. All right, not having a sex scene. Then. Not having a sex. There's no pictures of the sex scenes yet. Uh. I reckon it'll be one of these where the censors or the whoever makes the film will look at them and go, mm, it's too sex, too, too gay sex, that. Can't too have, gay sex. Too gay sex, that. Can't be having that in the cinemas. Because they will cut things if they don't. <laughs> if they don't think that... Foreskin's attractive, what? <laughs> that kind of thing. So, <laughs> so he was asked if he would be comfortable with his parents... Watching bottom. Watching him do sex scenes. Gay <laughs> Is he sex topping scenes. or bottoming? Um, I don't know. It's not been revealed. What do you think? Do you think he's a top or a bottom? Just in general, in life. I'd, I think he's probably verse. I, I would I'd, say that. I, I can see him being given and giving at the same time. Giving like and receiving train. at the same time. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Harry Styles um, sandwich. So he said, to the reply was, I don't know if I could watch, like my parents watch either. It's just a little bit too near. Just in case my dad goes, go on, son. Yeah. He wants it. So also they kind of, because we've spoken before about how in films and television programmes, they do kind of like strange things to simulate sex. And we were talking a couple of weeks ago about um, Bridgerton, where they had a half inflated uh, basketball between them. And it looked like the, the male was like bumming that. And, you know, um, he has he, he doesn't know anything about that. So they said, you know. Just stick it in him. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, like half oh, inflated balls. He doesn't know anything. Do him raw. <laughs> he doesn't know anything about netballs being used in intimate what, what's scenes. The, what's the phrase? So <laughs> I don't think I can quit you. <laughs> <laughs> he said, "I personally had no experience with a netball. I think it depends very much on who you're working with and what the situation is. All I can say from my own experience is that I was very lucky to have a very trusting relationship with the people that we were working with, and that kind of came first. So you bottom then. So." <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, um, it's it's not clear really about which one he was talking about because he didn't identify the film. So whether it was with his female partner or with his male partner, okay. um, his love interest in the film Ooh. is an actor called Patrick Hazelwood. Um, this is a seat that so in in the film they go to uh, Venice and um, have sexy times. That's them being filmed in Venice. Um, so the plan was to film two. This is this is from the from the actual film company um, to film two romps between Harry and David, oh. then another scene when Harry is naked on his own. Not much is going so to be shot. left to the imagination. Okay, if I don't see a cum shot, I'm not interested. They don't they don't show cum shots in, in films. It's something about Mary. You don't see jizz coming out at the end of a pee. No, but you see. You see Hanging from the yeah, so the film My Policeman is based on the novel by Beth and Roberts, and will also feature actors Emma Corrin and Rupert Everett. Oh, hasn't got a release date yet in the UK, which makes me think not got a release date for Harry Styles. They're hedging the bets. I wait to see how gay it is. They're edging their bets. They're edging their bets, ready for release. Yes, for release. Oh, let's bring it back on track. So. <laughs> Yes, because normally this show is the bastion of mature and sensible <laughs> yeah. level-headedness. Yeah. Um, we, we, we both enjoyed Pose, didn't we, the TV series? Oh, yes, yes. Bit of ugly um, crying at the end. Yeah, so it's, it's been um, award season and people have been getting loads and loads of awards. Um, Michaela J. Rodriguez, or MJ Rodriguez, she has um, received an oh, award... What's her surname? Rodriguez. Okay, not Rodriguez. Rodriguez. <laughs> Rodriguez. Rodriguez. MJ not, Rodriguez. Not, not, not gays. No. Rodriguez. Rodriguez. Yeah. yeah. She received an award, uh -huh. the Stephen F. Kolzak Award. Oh, the Stephen F. Kolzak Award. The LGBT oh. plus media professional who has made a huge difference in promoting queer acceptance. And that was at the 33rd Glad Media Awards oh, earlier gosh. this year. And what she did was she's spoken about how... There she is. Um, there she's going in. Going in? <laughs> there she's going into the awards. <laughs> she's going, Hello, I've not won anything yet. But I might do, I might not. Um, there she is. What she was talking about is how 
In her speech, she praised her parents for seeing her and loving her regardless of who she was. So she said she was she was talking about how acceptance from adults to queer kids can have a massive impact yeah. on, on children's lives. Here she is with her mum. Um, what she says is that when she was a child... Is her mum short? She's, who's short? Her mum. Her mum's tend to be smaller. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, what? <laughs> In my experience. <laughs> mums tend to be small. They do. They shrink as time goes on. <laughs> They're not a Russian nesting dolls. <laughs> They do. Little tiny the old lady. As you get older. Oh, dear. Okay. Anyway. <laughs> so what she's saying is... No, I'm trying to do a really serious piece on... on and you're just laughing, saying that... Small mothers. Maybe she's just far away. Yeah, or perhaps she's on her knees. Who knows? <laughs> we don't know. We don't know the context of that photograph. <clears throat> anyway... MJ is saying that when a child is loved, whether you are LGBTQIA or not, it makes all the difference. When you tell your queer child that you love them, they think, I love me too. So she's spent the time sort of like bigging up her, bigging up her mom. <laughs> <laughs> she's small. Because she's a mom. Because <laughs> she's a small mother. Um, <laughs> so I'm going to brown this up because I've just lost the will. So, so <laughs> MJ has made history as the first trans woman to be nominated for Best Actress at the Emmys. Yep. And she also broke the barriers as the first trans actor to win a Golden Globe. Yes. So, regardless of how big or small her mum is, <laughs> she's doing really well. Yes. Got a lot of respect for MJ. Yeah. Yeah. Good, good for the work. Yeah. yeah. That's the end of this week's Showbiz News, Mike. Thank you very much for that, Lee. Always nice to know that all mums are small. Well, coming up soon, we've got our Game of the Week. You're watching Chewing the Cud with Lee and Mike. And now we're going to play our Game of the Week, which is a game of Lazy Susan's musical roulette. So, Lee, off thy remove thyself. Oh. Bye. Game of the Week. So for this game, Lee's going to spin his Lazy Susan, pick out a musical question, and we'll try and answer it. Oh, okay. Simple as that. It's, it's, it's a simple premise. So we've got, works out we've got four well. categories. We've got pop, 80s, soundtracks, and rock. Yeah. So I shall, I shall spin the Lazy Susan round. Okay. Do do do, where it will stop. Oh, 80s. Oh. Okay. <clears throat> On which U2 album cover featured the intense stare of a young child? Are you recreating that intense stare? Was that you? Yeah, that was it. You know, what was it called? The album? U2 album. No. It was called War. Good I don't God. remember that. What is that good for? <laughs> Absolutely good. nothing. I don't think you two sang that. I did, did not. Okay. Boy, we stupid and people are stupid. Um, so it's in the middle of 80s or soundtracks. You may choose. Soundtracks. Hey. Na 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 Are you doing the theme tune to Jurassic Park? I don't, because you, you, you said I get to choose. What was the title of the first Beatles film? Yellow Submarine. Hey, hey, with the monkeys. <laughs> no. I didn't the know. Titanic. No. It's a hard day's night. It's a hard day. I've never seen a Beatles film. I'm not, shockingly, I'm not really a Beatles fan. Are you not? I know. It's hard to believe that, isn't it? But I'm not. Yeah. <laughs> they never recorded a stock kick in a woman. Why do I care? Right, spinning around. Oh, that was a long. Oh, rock. Oh, rock. That's the rock thing. 
Okay. <clears throat> Slash from Guns N' Roses was born in which country? Do you know who Slash is? Yes. The guitarist from Guns N' Roses. <laughs> With the curly hair in the top hat? And the Guns N' Roses. The Guns N' Roses, always smoking. Naughty. Which country? Yes. Bolivia. Hard to believe, but no. Ah, oh. he wasn't born in Bolivia. The jungles of Bolivia. No, he, he was born. He was born in the United Kingdom. Oh. Oh, he must have. He must have gone at, gone to America at a very early age. Spinny spin spin. Oh, it is rock again. Oh. Oh. Flat oh. No. Okay. Which heavy metal rock band? Has Tommy Lee playing on drums? None of them is retired. But well, did have Tommy Lee? It was Akduk. Huh? Akduk. Akduk? Akduk. Was Akduk? Akduk. ACDC? Akduk, yeah. No, it wasn't. Oh. I don't think they really ever really were big in the UK. Okay. No? No. Motley Crew. Oh, yeah. I wouldn't know a single Motley Crue song. Do you know a Motley Crue song? It, it had the dog with the laugh. No, that was Motley, you fool. Spinning around. Oh, pop. Ooh, I pop. could be so lucky. <laughs> Celine Dion famously married her manager. Can you name him? Mr. Dion. No. His name wasn't actually Dion. Oh, what? I know, crazy world. Crazy times. Not sure what you're waiting for. I've said Mr. Dion. Oh, well, sorry. I thought you were thinking of another thing. No, um, <laughs> no he, he was called René Angeli. Was he the guy from... From Allo Allo? Yeah. Ah, yeah. uh, René. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, he's dead now, so we'll not say anything. Um, Who is? René. René or René. Both of them. Both the dead. Both Celine's husband That's sad. and René the cafe. Celine Dion's dead. Celine Dion is not dead. She's still Just, with us. She's still with us, so her heart must still go on. Oh, my God. <sighs> oh, we've got our soundtracks again. Okay. Okay, Labyrinth, starring David Bowie. Or Bowie. One was released in which year? I'm doing the thing he does with his balls. Oh, yeah, the... What was the song out that he did out of... Um, dance, Aberdeen? Magic, Dance. Was dance, it? Magic, Dance. Wasn't it Absolute Beginners? No, that was out of Absolute Beginners, God. <laughs> David Bowie and Abba confused. <laughs> no, but he did a song. In Labyrinth. Did he? That was part was part of this I don't know. Anyway, what year was, was a labyrinth released? 84. Ooh. 86. So a bit off then. A bit, little bit off. Yeah. Do you know, I don't think I've ever seen it all the way through, Labyrinth. You've never seen it all the way through? I don't think so. I love the bog of eternal stench. It's got weird creepy puppets though, hasn't it? I like the weird creepy puppets. With weird elf faces. Yeah. Rock. Rock. <clears throat> Which documentary followed a band and the release of one of their famous albums, <laughs> Smell the Glove? He said release. Released. What was it? What was it? What documentary followed a band and the release of one of their famous albums, Smell the Glove? What answer have you got on the card? What? What answer have you got on the card? You, I can't tell you the answer on the card. Oh, well, I don't know if I'm right or not. Well, because that, that, you give me an answer first and then I tell you whether it's right or not. Oh, the monkeys. <laughs> no, it was This Is Spinal Tap. Oh, okay. But they were a fake band, weren't they? They weren't real. Pretend. Let us see where it will... St oh, soundtracks again. The 80s Sorry, oh. and, and... Soundtracks must be unbalanced. <clears throat> the film... Oh, I liked this song. <coughs> the film Scrooge featured a track. Sorry, they flam there. Put a little love in your heart. Name. <coughs> <coughs> Sorry. 
<clears throat> the film Scrooge featured a track, Put a Little Love in Your Heart. Name the two artists that sang it. Put a little love, love in your heart. In your heart. Put a little love in your heart. Do you think of your fellow man? Do, 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 do. Put a little love in your heart. Um, Stevie Wonder? And the world would be a better place. No, it was, um, it was Annie Lennox and Al Green. Oh. Oh. Edumacated learning. God, oh. I don't know what that was coming out. So, well, so, it's soundtracks again. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay, Up Where We Belong <laughs> was released by Joe Cocker and Jennifer Warnes. <laughs> but which film did it feature in? Up Where We Belong. Where eagles fly over mountains, we could be heroes. No, it's not Just that. for one day. I was singing the medley from uh, Moulin Rouge. Oh, okay. So do you know what film it was? Moulin Rouge. No, it wasn't the film. It was in Moulin Rouge. No. It, it was. might have been, but not originally. Uh huh. Moulin Rouge. No. Shall I give you a clue? Moulin Rouge. <laughs> Officer and a gentleman. Moulin Rouge. With um. Moulin Rouge. <laughs> With um, Richard Gere. And he dressed in his sailor suit. And went, yeah, whatever, whatever, whatever. Spin it round. You're not going to believe it, Mike. It's frigging soundtracks. Again. Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> and what was the soundtrack to Steven... No. What was the soundtrack to Steven Spielberg's animated film... An American Tale about the mouse. Well, Faisal. Was that what it was called? Faisal the mouse. Okay. I want to be in America. Ding 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 in America. No, it wasn't that. America. In London in America. There was a special song commissioned. Was it a Disney film? No, it was a Steven Spielberg film. No. No idea. It was somewhere out there. Oh, Linda Ronsman. Out there beneath the pale moon. Some sort of punishment for something or other. But coming up after the break, we have the joyful, the wonderful, that's a light crafty queens. Welcome back to Chewing the Cud. And now it's time we consider what we've done wrong as we get punished repeatedly every week with Crafty Queens. Are you feeling crafty, Mike? I'm feeling something beginning with a C. Oh. We're going to make something just lovely from the Victorian era. Um, which is consumption? Which is where consumption? Yes, I do. Yeah, we're gonna, consumption in a jar. We're going to make um, a, a traditional Victorian keepsake. Okay. Mm -hmm. So you've got a big jar in front of you. I do. Yeah. So do I. I'm going to put my jar aside for one moment. Okay. For I do not need it yet. Okay. <clears throat> you do have a rather beautiful photo. Did you tell that my my printer was running out of ink? Yes. Last night. Yeah, wasn't wasn't happy. Yeah. So yeah, lovely picture. There was supposed to be two pictures, different pictures with stripes. Yeah, it ran out of ink. So we're going to just have to deal with it. Um, so what? To kind of make it look a little bit old and Victorian-y. Uh -huh. Round the outside, yep. where it's white. Mm -hmm. I just want you just to tear gently, so it gives it kind of like a old photograph type. <laughs> Vibe. Okay. Because we're going to age it. We're going to age it, are we? But this photo contains a picture of you, Lee. It's got a picture why of me. Why would I want? To, no, a picture of you. Would I want? To, why would I want to age a picture of you? I know it's it's it's. Ooh. Because it's pretty much like you're shooting fish in a barrel. <laughs> have you have you managed to? Yeah, I've, I've torn my edges off. Okay, right. So you also have a little pot of glue. Elmer's glue, sparkly. Uh -huh. um, and you've got a little sponge. Yeah. Yeah. So what you're going to do is put a little bit of the glue onto your 
sponge applicator. Right. You might have to shake it. Quite a lot. Ooh. And then what you're going to do is... Huh? Not very heavy-handed, quite lightly. Okay. Just brush the glue yeah. across, across the front of the um, photograph. Because this is going to, like, preserve it. I mean, if you wanted to laminate it, you could laminate it. Oh, I could have just laminated this, could I? Gooder? Huh? Did you say, I prefer laminating, it's gooder? No, I said I could have just laminated this, could I? You could have, if you wanted to, but then it would have been a very short Crafty Queens. I prefer the shorter ones. Okay. Our viewers prefer the shorter ones. Well... Okay, so I'm going to put that to one side. Have you done yours? Yeah. Okay, pop that to one side. Uh-huh. And then get hold of your jar. Yeah. You've got a little, you've got a little pallet, a little pot, a little pouch even, mm -hmm. of glass gems. Yeah, glass beads. Glass beads. Yeah. You're going to glue those in whatever pattern you want to around the base of your jar. Okay. Just to add a little bit of interest. Now, I'm, we're using the hot glue gun. Yeah. So as always. always so you're going to burn yourself? Be, be careful. Ow! <sighs> it did that on purpose. It did that on purpose. <laughs> Yowza! It, it... Stop putting your fingers on the hot part of the hot glue gun. It real this glue spurts shoots the hot it hits, glue out. Hurts it at you, doesn't it? <laughs> yeah. So yeah, I'm I'm alternating colours. I've got yellow and gold. See, because believe it or not, back in the day, back in the Victorian era, photographs were not a common thing. No. They they were only really for the very riche. Mm -hmm. Um so when you had a photograph taken, it's usually when you were dead. They used to, ah! The elf. Join yourself there, Lee. Tapping away. Ooh, that burns. That thing where people like light candles and then drip it on themselves. Uh -huh. in sexy time. I don't understand that because that this glue stuff hurts. Well, it's because that's candle wax rather than hot glue. Are they not exactly the same heat and consistency? No, different temperatures, aren't they? Ooh. Right, so I've glued my, my beads on. You've glued your beads on? Yep. I just need to glue one more on. Um I'm gonna I'm gonna pop the rest of my gold beads inside. Okay. Is that mandatory? Hmm? Is that mandatory? Doesn't have to be. Take your okay. picture. Yeah. Oh. <clears throat> and gently. Uh -huh. Place it in the middle. So, you don't want it to stick to the actual sides of the, like mine has done. You want it to kind of oh, rest in the middle. <laughs> that looks, that looks beautiful. <laughs> Isn't it like that, like that? Now in an ideal situation, we would have allowed these to dry completely. Right, so it just needs to sit in the middle. Yeah. You want to see the photograph, but you don't want it to stick to the actual front of it. So you want like that? Yes, that's it. Okay. Oh, that's looking beautiful. Now, what the Victorians used to do was, because they were very... Did they not die at a young age, the Victorians? Yeah, they did. Oh. Yeah. They used to... They were big. They were big into like astronomy and like the meanings of things, and everybody would have like so. Depending on what year or day you were born, you would have a flower. I don't. I can't be bothered finding out what yours and mine were. So I've just bought some random roses. Um, so we're going to put those inside the jar on the other side of the photograph. So on the, on the plain side. Yes. Victorians will call this a posy. Hmm? They would. Victorians would call this a posy. A death posy. What? Why would it be a death posy? You know, I made it up. Oh, okay. I don't really know. <laughs> but they would put that person's um, ashes. 
No, <laughs> that person's <coughs> flowers in that were their thing. Flower of the month club, whatever. Oh, look at you arranging yours all nicely. Oh, okay. how beautiful. Now, if we were Victorians, we'd fill this up with, with um, formaldehyde, but we're not Victorians. So we're gonna use an alternative. We're gonna use cooking oil. Oh, lovely. So I've got, you. we've both got a jar, bottle, uh -huh. of the finest natural sunflower oil. Vegetable oil is good. Okay. Um, don't use, don't use cooking oil, like chip fat oil, crisp and dry. Don't want to use that. Why not? Um, it's it just icky. Just icky, icky, icky. It's the same oil as this oil. Mm. You want it more natural. This isn't, this is pure sunflower oil. Okay. So you're going to pour that into your jar, because this is where the magic happens. <laughs> oh, listen to that noise. Now, I may have misjudged the amount required. <laughs> Probably need a little bit more oil. Enough to cover your picture and your flowers. And then once you've done that, attach your, your top. And basically what we've got is a badly printed photograph in a jar full of oil, <laughs> which any homeowner <laughs> Why does this exist? Any homeowner would be proud to have that on their shelf. I am a homeowner. I am Look not. Look at my jar of oil. <laughs> and questionable photograph. Yeah. Um I think it's beautiful. Um and um yeah, please if you do that at home, send in your photographs. Um it'd be great to hear from them. And as I say every week, if you can't get any peen or any vagine. Be a crafty queen. Well, what'll happen, because we have not filled it up to the top with oil, yeah. is that that paper will just degrade. Well, paper will degla degrade anyway, soaked in oil. Not in oil. Yeah. It'll just remain as it is. It won't, it'll degrade. Next week, we'll see who wins. Okay. Who has the most. Who's correct. Unagi. That's almost the end of the show for this week, but remember to join us on our social media. That's at the Cud TV. Our website is thecud.tv. And of course, on YouTube and podcasts, just search for Chewing the Cud. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you soon. Bye. You want me to top you up? Top, top, top it up. <laughs>